Next up is Angela. Right. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, and I just wanted to echo something Paul, you concluded with, which is that it's been a great privilege and hugely interesting to work with this group of commissioners, with the Centre Forum Support, and with you. Thank you. Um, and I think the report that we've got out brings in a lot of things that many of the people in this room have been talking about for a long time, but actually brings them in clearly, looks at the evidence, so I think it's been a terrific experience, and I genuinely hope it's the start of a journey. I've been asked to respond particularly around some of the issues uh, that are labelled communities in, in here. Um, and I suppose overall, and the most important issue, is what the report finds is that a society we should take every possible opportunity and at the earliest stage to make sure that communities are supporting us all to be mentally well. Um, so what the Commission wanted to do was to describe how this really difficult task might be tackled and how we might measure some of our achievements. Um, and in establishing a, a national wellbeing programme, we need to take an asset and a strength-based approach, valuing the capacity, the skills, the knowledge, and the connections that are in communities. Um, and we think some of the key challenges to being able to do that effectively are about combating loneliness and isolation, about how to promote resilience and connection between people and groups, uh, how to tackle the particular pressures on some vulnerable communities. We talked about uh, some minority communities, racial minorities and so on, but also people who are poor, children who are from poor families, and the opportunities that they don't necessarily have. Um, we talked about a challenge that's about tackling the stigma that people feel about their mental health problem and the active discrimination uh, that they actually experience even in the NHS, and Paul, you've referred to the gap in funding. Just look at that. We talk about that in the report. And of course, we wanted to talk about how communities could be supported by developing the research base nationally. So that's some techie stuff that we need to do. But underpinning it all is this belief that we need to work on, on strengths and assets. So what do we talk about in the community section? We talk about how nationally mental health and well-being should feature across the work of government, across housing, education, uh, employment, welfare and others will, will come in on this in more detail, but also that this should be a visible consideration of issues of mental health and well-being. Um, and we expect a national commission, uh, commitment rather to close that gap between mental and physical health in investment, but also in, in outcomes, in waiting times, in research, and in aspirations. Um, <clears throat> we, we make a, a point that Public Health England has its own role in promoting proper accounting for well-being at a national level. And we would hope to see that, and we want to be able to hold them to account for that. But also their role in holding to account local public health teams to include uh, mental health in their plans. And you'll see in the report some of the comments about how few of those teams have got <coughs> mental health as a priority. Then locally, we talk about mental health and well-being needing to be a core function of local public health, but supporting those health and well-being boards. You can imagine we had quite a debate about how we talk about health and well-being boards. They are variable. Some of them are malnourished, I think, is a fair comment at the moment, but they are the vehicle that we have to use. And I think it's for every one of us to really push them hard and to look for that input and to make them grow and to really think about their work in integration, including excluded and vulnerable communities. Um, and a final set of recommendations for communities are about funding currently what's the time to change program it's been very successful but national and local programs to combat discrimination and to combat the way that people are stigmatized for their mental health problems finally what we haven't done well always in mental health is to monitor how we're making progress 
And so we've looked at the metrics, the way that we need to develop this, and again, Paul touched on some of that, but you will see within the report the way that we say we must measure, we must count, we must develop the ways that we measure that are sensitive to individuals and communities, but really can account for progress at a national and local level. So to summarise, uh, work nationally uh, with government, across government and with Public Health England. Work locally, strengthening health and well-being with that public health support uh, and to include mental health in all of our plans. Um, nationally and locally to develop our, our metrics, the way that we measure it, and systematically to keep tackling stigma and discrimination. And I think if you look at the community <coughs> section, you'll see a lot more detail. So it's been a pleasure to be able to comment on that section. Thank you, Chair. Thank you.